These new Air Jordan 11s make me so happy, yet so sad at the same time. Today, we're gonna be looking at the Air Jordan 11 Bread Velvets, and these came out exclusively in women's sizing. Now, before we get into all the details, breaking down all the styles, cuts, and materials of this shoe, and comparing them to how the originals came out, you know we gotta talk about the history first. Back in 1995-96, we saw the Air Jordan 11s hit the scene in multiple colorways. You had the Concord 11s, you had the Columbia 11s, and you had the Bread 11s. Also during this time, Michael Jordan was seen wearing the Space Jam 11s as well, but these never originally came out to the public. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen a ton of highlights and clips over the years, images, you name it, of Michael Jordan playing on the basketball court with the Bread 11s or when he won his championship, laying on the ground and he had the Bread 11s on as well. This was after his comeback to the NBA after his first retirement. And following that, they ended up winning two more championships, which eventually gave Michael Jordan six total NBA championships, a ton of awards and accolades, but again, Again, during this time with the Bread 11s and all the other models, the Concords especially, there were a lot of iconic moments, not only on the court, but just in sneaker culture and our pop culture as well. Now we have seen a ton of different retro iterations over the years from the early 2000s to 2008, and then another retro in 2012, and then you had cleats, high tops, and low tops. You had regular retros with low tops as well, and we see another low top set to come out next year. So it's easy to say the Air Jordan Bread 11 is gonna be always iconic, and we'll typically see different retro iterations over the years, but nothing like this. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now my name is DJ and this is the DNA show so now that you guys know a little bit of history about the shoe let's go ahead and start breaking down all the details and we'll go over some comparisons along the way from the original version which is the previous retro and this women's release right here starting with the bottom of the outsole you can see classic traditional Air Jordan 11 bread vibes you got the all red gum outsole semi translucent you got your jump man here with the black and then you can see your carbon fiber here with the black and silver right here on the shank plate and that's gonna be also exposed right here on the center of the foot around the arch and and then you're gonna have your classic hair and bone traction pods right here in black on the front end at the ball of the foot and the toe and then the back end around the heel now going up to the midsole you're gonna see a white textured material not completely smooth and this is something that has been always classic as well when it comes to the Air Jordan 11's presentation now when it comes to the upper this is gonna be an extremely different change and that's because it has a fully velvet upper when it comes to the area where it's typically patent leather and then your mesh or leather at the top end right here around the lace now before we get into all those details I gotta talk about this real quick because this is kind of interesting to me. We see the Reimagined series and it's been only in men's sizes for the Reimagined series. And with that series, we've seen some fours, we've seen some threes, we've seen some ones. We got different stuff like that over the years. And it's been about what, five or six different models that have come out over the time. This right here, to me, in my opinion, is the perfect example of the reimagined series and i think it could have easily been claimed the reimagined series just done in a full size run and being given to us for every single size again i'm happy for the women and i'm glad that they got it but at the same time this just embodies air jordan 11 reimagined it makes sense you take a patent leather sneaker and switch it to velvet completely opposite material i mean it just like it's right there you had it and then y'all decided to switch it up. That's where I'm confused. Because some of the sneakers that are quote unquote reimagined, they just have like an aged look to it. For example, the White Cement 3, these are the reimagined, and all they did was, well I won't say all they did, but what they did was give it an old school cut and look, with that vintage vibe right there on the midsole, a little bit of yellowing right here on the back end, and you got that reimagined look like you're bringing back a sneaker from the past, similar to the Lost and Found ones. But if you take something like the Patent Bread reimagined ones, clearly you can tell it was a leather sneaker, and now they turned it into a patent leather sneaker, which is a big difference, and I can see how they reimagined that and turned it into something different. And we can go into that because you guys know about all the other reimagined sneakers, but you kind of get where I'm going here, right? So I say all that to say, when you put these two shoes side by side, you can clearly see same shoe, everything like that, huge switch up in materials. So with all that being said, let's go over all the details. Now wrapping around the top end of the shoe right here, typically this is where you see the separation with the patent leather all throughout that area. This is gonna be in that velvet, and then you're gonna have, it looks like it's kind of rolled over with a nice finish 
around the edges. So one thing I can say, it doesn't look too rough like a rough cut. I like how they have that clean presentation on the shoe. And I think they did a really good job on the execution, just not making it look sloppy. Now just above that, you're gonna have more of a ballistic type mesh right here where the lace holes go. And that's gonna go in each line throughout this area. And then you're gonna have your lace holes with your rope laces on the front end of the shoe here. And then you're gonna have your velvet on the inside right here all throughout this top of the sneaker. Now typically on an Air Jordan 11, let's say the Cool Gray 11s for example. As you can see right here, you have that suede kind of material and then you have that ballistic mesh right there and it's a nice switch up and separation all throughout that area with the tongue so it's kind of similar to that as we go along so i like how this element was added and it kind of honestly might have been dope if they did patent leather all throughout this front end and then velvet throughout the top end of the shoe that might have been kind of clean too let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section but overall i think when it comes to the execution and the presentation just with the cuts and the lines and the seams and how they kind of rolled it over and kept it clean even around the ankle area and all this stuff I think they did a really good job and that's honestly another thing speaking of that with the leather typically it kind of wrinkles up or rolls up over time and you see that creasing in it around the heel when you put the shoe on or if you wear it I don't think you're gonna have that issue with this shoe so I think that's gonna be a very convenient thing as well when it comes to rocking this sneaker so that's definitely another plus when it comes to overall wearability of the shoe now another dope hit on this sneaker that I really really love is gonna be the red branding that you see here on the tongue of the sneaker now typically on the bread 11s you're gonna see a white text with a red jump man but this is actually all in red text throughout the tongue and then on the back end right here you have this raised and it's like a plastic piece here and that's gonna be in a red metallic jump man here which is similar to kind of like how you see in your gratitude 11s or something like that just giving you that vibe even I forgot to mention earlier, you have other Velvet 11s that have come out for women in the past. You got a burgundy colorway, you got a navy colorway, you got different things like that. Even similar to the Stingray, the black and gold colorway, which I think is like a OVO 11 in my opinion, but that right there, very similar. So I like how they added that premium touch. And I think honestly, when they come to women's sneakers, they always do a really good job on execution and giving us a nice premium element to all the shoes, or at least the vast majority of them. Now, another premium hit that a lot of people may not notice or even care about is gonna be that 23 right here on the back. You're gonna see that in that same kind of rubbery plastic material on the back end. Typically, this is gonna be like a heat press or stamped in with those numbers, and it's gonna be in that white text. And over time, as you wear the shoes and you have pants on or something, it typically rubs those numbers off. We used to go through this struggle back in the day. I remember, I don't know if you guys remember or been collecting for this long or, or during that time. Remember the early 2000s? Remember after the CDP pack came out and then the next Bread 11s had came out after that? I think it was like 2011, 2012, something like that. Remember the back ends on all the shoes, the, the Space Jams, the Breads, the Concours, the Cool Grays, all that stuff was coming out during that time. The numbers were rubbing off of people's jeans and people used to sell replacement numbers and you would like take it off and then you would try to iron it on and like replace it and like DIY kind of fix your shoe. That was good times. I don't know if you guys remember those times, but <laughs> I remember trying to do it and I, <laughs> I horribly failed. I tried it on one shoe and I was like, we're definitely not doing this on the other one. I ended up getting rid of my pair. But either way, I like this nice premium touch to the shoe as well. Now going to the back end of the tongue, this is another dope hit that you typically see. Now typically this is actually more of a white text, but it says quality basketball product inspired by the greatest player ever. You're gonna have that stamp right, well not stamp, but tag right here with a red jump man in the middle of that. And then on the inside, on the collar, you're gonna have that all black and black behind the tongue. And then on the sock liner, it's gonna be covered in red with a black jump man. And let's check these insoles. Actually, they got some polyurethane insoles up in here too. Oh, they came correct. This is nice. Now, continuing on with the sneaker, you have another nice premium touch right here, and you're gonna have your red metal tips on the end of the laces. Now, these aren't your standard Air Jordan 11 laces. They're a lot more skinnier, and I would say, I guess, uh, sleek looking, if you wanna use those words. But either way, this is what you typically see when it comes to those laces on the women's Air Jordan 11. So, I get where they're going. I see the consistency in that as well. And when you see all the photos side by side with the two different models, you can definitely clearly see the differences of all the things I was talking about even when it comes to the branding on the tongue the 23s on the back the jump man on the heel the leather the patent leather the different elements like that and then another thing when you look at the car 
carbon fiber. Honestly, the carbon fiber shank plate on these, uh, <laughs> I wanted to say reimagined, but these red velvet women's pair, the carbon fiber looks way better on the women's pair than the men's pair that came out. What was this, 2019 or something like that? It's kind of got that white black. It looks kind of similar to that OG vibe, but this is just, it looks really, really nice. So I think they did a good job on that. I didn't even notice that until I look at this right now. So I think a lot of cool details, a lot of differences, and a lot of reasons why you can love this sneaker. But the only thing that I'm so mad about, <sighs> I'm a size 13 in men, and these went up to like a size 12 in women, so that's like a 10 and a half in men's. So I literally have no chance of ever wearing this sneaker, and I'm very salty. But luckily, you know, I got a pair from my mom, so now she can rock these. She doesn't even know. She's probably gonna be watching this video and be like, oh, you got me a pair? So this is kind of convenient for her, but either way, I got a pair from my mom, so I'm excited to see her rock these. And speaking of that, where is the other pair? I ain't gonna lie to you. When I saw these, I had to get these. I don't even got no kids yet, but these things go absolutely insane. I'm gonna see, I, I guarantee you for Christmas, everybody's gonna be buying these shoes for their kids. Boy, girl, you name it, they're gonna be buying these shoes because these things are so clean. Just look at these things. Oh my gosh, but these are so clean so now that you guys have heard enough about this sneaker let's see what everybody else thinks about the shoe when it comes to fire or trash because i'm very interested for me honestly i'm gonna say fire i'm gonna say cop if this came out in men's sizes or was available in extended women's sizes 100 percent cop for me i think potentially try to catch it on sale but i think it would sell out in men's sizes so i'll probably go after it on release date i think the release in the retro the what was it, how much i think it was like 230 bucks or something like that Pretty expensive for this shoe. I think these probably more of a, like a 170, 180, probably a price like that. Let me know what you guys think about pricing as well. But I posted a poll on my Instagram story and this is what people said. 50% of the people said fire and 50% of the people said trash. So clearly a lot of people are on the fence and I think once you see the shoe in hand and in person and see all the details and how nice it is, you're gonna like it and at the same time, you may not like the shoe at all, but still you might respect it and say, you know what, that's a clean shoe. It's not for me, but I still respect it. I can see that too. And some people are like, these are OGs. What are you doing? Why are you guys messing up this shoe? Just give us the classic OG shoe. Stop getting all crazy with it. What are you guys thinking? I understand that too. I've heard that story on a lot of people's sides as well. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comment section. We got a ton more reviews. Where's the other pair at? Hold on. I still got to give you guys a quick early look at the Black Cement Reimagined. We got some ranking videos to do. We got some history videos to do. I'm excited to get into these as well. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button for those videos coming very soon. And I'll see you guys in another one. I would never let you down and send my DNA. Hey, hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. One of one I would never let you down and send my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for it. It's in the DNA.